Hello, my name is Josh Much. I'm with the University of Washington at Junhao Chu's Quantum Materials Lab. Today I want to walk through the basic process of collecting current voltage data using, as an example, the Keithley 2400. The Keithley 2400 is a common instrument you'll find in a lot of labs, so I've chosen it as an example. And we'll walk through the basic process of how to interface with the front panel, how to communicate with it through a computer, and finally, at the end of the day, we'll walk through some basic circuits and collect data on a few different circuits. So the Keithley 2400, or the 2400 as I'll refer to it from now on, is what's known as a source meter, which means it can source as well as sense current and voltage. You can configure this in a lot of different ways, but the two ways I'll configure it today are to source voltage and measure current or conversely, you can source current and measure voltage. By default, the instrument will source as well as sense on these two terminals on the front right. If you would like to source and sense on a different part of the circuit, you can put it in what, into what's called four wire sense. To do that, you hit the config button, measure V, and you'll see this sense mode flashing as an option. You can select that, and go switch between two wire and four wire sense. You can see I already had it set up in four wire sense. So we'll select that and exit out of this menu. So right now, the instrument is configured to source current through these two terminals and sense voltage through these two terminals. You know it's in four wire mode because you see this little four wire icon right there. We can take it out of four wire mode by going config V, sense mode, and go over to two wire. One thing to keep in mind when using this instrument is the source range and the compliance level of the instrument. So for example, if we are sourcing current and measuring voltage, uh, and we tell it to source something on the order of one amp of current, you can imagine if we attach a mega ohm resistor across these leads right here, it would need a huge voltage to source that current and it, there might be a safety problem there. So what the compliance voltage is, it's, it's our safety net. This instrument will not exceed the compliance voltage. Um, so in the example of hooking up a mega ohm resistor across these two leads and telling it to pump uh, about an amp of current, uh, you're basically asking it to put a megavolt across these two leads. But with the compliance voltage set at 20, uh, it will not go beyond 20 volts across these two leads right here. All right, so this is the back panel of the Keithley 2400. And the only thing I want to point out here is that right here is a GPIB slot. So I think this is the easiest way to communicate to this instrument through a computer. Um, so we have here a GPIB to USB adapter and I'll plug one end into the instrument and the USB end into the computer. All right, the first thing I like to do when interfacing with a new instrument is to open up a program called MAX, Measurement and Automation Explorer. Uh, this is a national instrument program, and uh, if it's installed on your computer, you can usually bring it up by just searching for MAX in the Start menu and opening it. So this is the home screen, and let's click Devices and Interfaces up here on the upper left and it will search for all the devices connected to the computer. And there it is, the GPI to USB adapter. We'll click that, and currently it looks like there are no instruments connected to the computer, so we'll have to hit Scan for Instruments. And we can test to make sure we're really communicating with this instrument by hitting this Communicate with Instrument button, which will load this little pop-up box. Uh, it suggests we send the command asterisk IDN, which is a really common command that most in instruments will respond to. Uh, so we can send this query out and the instrument will respond with Keithley Instruments Model 2400. And at this point, I'm totally confident that we are interfacing with the instrument. I've got a 3.8 kilo ohm resistor box and I'm gonna hook up the two leads of that resistor to the input output uh, of the Keithley. I'm going to ask the Keithley to source one milliamp of current and I'm going to measure the voltage response. So I'll turn on that output. Okay, so I have max open here and I'm going to communicate with the Keithley. It's um, pumping a milliamp of current through our resistor box right now. 
So I'm going to click communicate with instrument and bring up this dialog communication box. I'm going to type in the command read question mark. You can find this command in the Keithley 2400 manual. And I'm going to hit query. And the Keithley 2400 will respond with the voltage that it's measuring as the first element, uh, the current that it's sourcing is the second element, and these other things that we don't really care about that we could read the manual and figure out what they meant uh, if we cared. But really all we're looking at right now is the voltage and current that the Keithley is measuring and sourcing. So I'm going to use LabVIEW 2016. I find LabVIEW uh, to be a, a good choice to get something up and running quickly with minimal effort. And I'm going to hit Create Project. So it'll bring up this menu and I'll just click Blank VI and Finish. And that will load this blank screen right here. So this blank screen is called the front end of the program. If you hit Control E, it will bring up the back end of the program. The front panel will be what users interface with. The back panel will be where you do the coding. So I'm not quite going to start from scratch for this project. I'm going to use a sub VI that I've written. So I'm going to right click in this white area in the back panel and I'm going to click select a VI and I'm going to open this GPIB send receive sub VI. I'll show you the guts of this sub VI later, but for now we'll just use it. Uh, and I'm going to place it in my back panel. Uh, so as I hover over this, it'll tell me what these different inputs and outputs are. We only need to use a few of these for this project. Uh, the first one being the GPIB address. I'm going to right click that and create a constant and give the constant a value of 24, which is the GPIB address that our 2400 is on. I'm gonna give it data string in, which will be our query to the instrument. So I'll right click, create, constant, and I'll type read question mark. Uh, and it will respond with data string out. I'll right click that, create indicator. So you can see as soon as I created that indicator, this indicator popped up on the front page. So if we run this program now, you can see the response from the 2400, and this is the same exact response we got from running this command through max earlier. So the first response is the voltage across the resistor. Uh, the second thing after the first comma is the current through the resistor. Uh, now we want to decompose this and retrieve just the voltage and just the current. What I'll do is I'll just use LabVIEW to parse out this bit before the first comma and immediately between the first and second comma. So I'll use the LabVIEW split string command. So I'll right click in the back panel, search for split to search split string. So I'll select that, put it on the back panel. As an input, it takes a string. We'll hook this up to our response from the instrument. And then it also takes as an input the search string character. So we'll right click, create constant, and give it comma as its value. Um, offset, we won't do anything for that input. Uh, so looking at the outputs, we have substring before match and match plus rest of string. So what I'll do is I'll create indicator and create indicator again and we can see these pop up on the front panel and if I run this program again you can see that substring before the comma it's this first value and match plus rest of string it we get the rest of the string basically copy and paste that uh, search split string this time for the input I'll give it match plus rest of string. I'll say search for a comma again. This time I'll give it an offset uh, of one. So it'll ignore the first comma. This output substring before the first, before the match should be our current. So create indicator. I'll get rid of this uh, and get rid of that wire. I'm just hitting delete after I select these. And so now I only have two indicators on my, and they should correspond to my current and voltage. 
So I'll run this program. Unfortunately, I have a comma there that I don't want. Um, so I'll need to delete that. Okay, so here I've just created a little bit of code to delete that unwanted comma right there. Uh, string subset right here. Um, that takes this input with the comma and says re ignore the first character and now I have um, the data I want which is just the current. So I'll just delete this box uh, and the only two indicators to the user now are strings containing just the voltage or just the current measurement. So this pinkish color that most of these um, wires are indicates that the data type is a string. It's a, it's a bunch of letters. Uh, in order to plot data visually to the user, I'll have to convert these uh, strings to numbers. To do that, I'll right click, hover over this box right here, hover over this um, basically a, a pink to blue converter, which means string to number converter, and it gives me some conversion options. What I'll want is a fractional exponential string to number, I'll place that on the back panel. Uh, I'll copy it and paste it so I have two of these. Um, and for their inputs, I will wire to my strings. There we go. And for their outputs, I'll create more indicators. Create indicator. And again, create indicator. I'll delete my string indicators. And if I run this program again, now my data that I'm reading from the Keithley is in a numeric form. So we're able to read data from the Keithley. We may also want to control the Keithley and not just send queries, but send commands to the Keithley as well. I am going to create a for loop. I'll right click, I'll hover over the structures box and uh, I'll, I'll actually do a while loop and I'll encompass this program. This will loop uh, an infinite amount of times on, until we wire in a true condition and if we don't wire anything it'll just keep going indefinitely. So right now this is pretty boring because the result will be the same each time. Uh, the Keithley is not sourcing anything differently. So what we'll want to do is do two things inside this loop. Not just read data, but write data to the Keithley as well. So I'll right click, hover over structures, and this flat sequence structure, I'll encompass all of this. Add frame before. So now, how this flat sequence structure works is that it'll execute anything here and then afterwards it'll execute something here. All right, so I've done a little bit of wiring. Um, here I've basically used this uh, LabVIEW command called GPIB write, uh, and into that I've wired a string that is the uh, address of the Keithley 2400. Into that I've also wired the command we're gonna send the Keithley, which is source current 0 0.0005, so it's going to source half a milliamp of current. I've also wired this 3, which is just mode that, uh, that works for most instruments. You can read about this uh, in LabVIEW documentation if you want. What I'm going to do, source a current wave across uh, the Keithley 2400. I'm going to use a sub VI in LabVIEW called simulate signal. Drop it on our back panel here. I'm going to use a triangle wave. The parameters I have to play with are frequency, um, phase, amplitude, and offset. Here's my simulate signal and I'm going to wire in a phase of zero, or sorry, an offset of zero. A frequency, I'm going to give it 0.1 frequency, so a nice slow triangle wave. Amplitude, create constant. I'm going to do 0.001, so 1 milliamp of current will be the maximum current. Phase, create constant, I'm just going to say 0 phase. Right click and search for something called convert from dynamic data. 
I'll drop that on the back panel and I'll say convert to a single scalar. So the end goal here is to be able to tell the Keithley 100 source current and some dynamic value that is changing. There's this concatenate string. So I'm going to select that and drop it right here. Uh, I'm going to say source current and wire that into the front half of the string I want to wire. And now I want the value of what the current should be wired in there. Look at our number string conversion options and do number to fractional string. Wire the number as the input and our output is the string right there. We'll wire this right there. So now we should source current and the value that we source current should be this changing thing from our signal. So we'll wire that into our GPIB right. So let's run this program. And you can see that indeed this number is going up and down right there. All right, so now we want to build a plot that will show the user data collected in real time. Right click uh, and hover over graph and let's do an XY graph right here. So I'll click that. Uh, so I'll move this graph over here. And basically what we're going to want to do is bundle our X and Y data into this graph. Uh, so I'm going to right click, search for something called a bundle, open that up, put it on our back end, and plug in our current and voltage uh, into this bundle. And I'm going to search for something else called build array. Okay, put that on the screen. And I think I can make this multiple elements. Yeah. So I'm going to take the output of this build array, wire it to the XY graph. And it's complaining. Uh, it'll, it'll be okay in a second though. I'm going to right click the XY graph, create local variable, place it there, right click, change to read and wire this to the top half of build array. Then I'm going to take the output cluster, wire it to the bottom half. So we'll run this program and you can see that we're collecting current on the y-axis, uh, one milliamp of current is what we're sourcing, and we're measuring um, voltage on the x-axis. That's opposite what I wanted to do, so we can just switch the order of this, of this wiring. So we can add some appropriate labels, voltage, current, again. And you can see that all our previous data is still on this graph and it's totally ruining our scale. So we probably want to fix that. So now at the beginning of the program, it'll load a bunch of zeros and we can see the scale correctly. So let's run this program again. Yeah, it loaded all the zeros and now we see our data being collected live time. Just to prove that this program is working, it's currently not sourcing any current. When I go and run this program, oops, and now look at the Keithley 2400, uh, it's indeed changing the current and voltage. All right, well that concludes what I wanted to cover. Uh, I hope you learned something from this and feel more confident not only operating the front panel and automating the 2400, but also any instrument. A lot of what we covered uh, can be generalized to a lot of different things.